It is a widely accepted truism that large capital projects, such as those found within the oil and gas industry, face a world of significant risk and uncertainty. However, when this statement is examined more rigorously, it becomes clear that there is confusion over what, precisely, this seemingly simple and self-obvious phrase actually means. What is risk? What is uncertainty? How are they related? How are they different? A good starting point to more fully understanding risk and uncertainty is to examine a situation that is relatively immune to these forces, such as building a table in a typical manufacturing facility. Business uses an operations approach to build a product or to provide a standard service. Because the process is so repetitive and predictable, it is quite reasonable to use single numbers to describe how much it costs to make a table or how long it takes to convert raw materials into finished product ready for shipment. While there are variations in time or cost or scope between individual tables, those variations are so small that they can generally be safely ignored. As a result, we say that there is relatively small uncertainty in these kinds of numbers. However, the story gets more complicated when we consider complex capital projects. In a typical large oil and gas project, it is virtually impossible to completely control the environment or to fully define the scope of work. The cost and time penalties are simply too large. Instead, we undertake projects knowing that the scope is not fully defined and the work environment is subject to ongoing and unpredictable changes. As a result, we say that a project has a significant uncertainty in scope, cost, and schedule. So, if we agree that undertaking a large capital project is not really like building a table due to the underlying uncertainty, then why is the following conversation between the business and the project manager so common? The business needs to take a clear decision on this project. Should we go ahead with it or not? To make this decision, we need to know the scope you intend to deliver, what the project will cost, and how long it will take to complete. All too often, key project commitments such as scope and cost and schedule are framed in precisely this manner, relying upon single numbers, which are also known as point estimates. The uncertainty is not explicitly acknowledged, and risky capital projects are discussed almost as if they were like building a table in a factory environment. A more useful interaction between the business and the project manager might be, the business needs to take a clear decision on this project. Should we go ahead with it or not? To make this decision, we need to ensure you are clear on the business case for the scope you intend to deliver and can provide a realistic range of cost and schedule outcomes, along with the important risk events, variability, and issues that are driving these ranges. Now, this may seem like a minor distinction relative to the first conversation, but it is not. Framing a conversation correctly is absolutely critical to creating a shared understanding of the situation. There is always a lack of clarity with respect to future events, and point estimates simply cannot convey this uncertainty. Good business decisions require an understanding of the uncertainty or the riskiness associated with undertaking a project. Now that we have established the business need for describing uncertainty, we can construct a comprehensive picture of uncertainty that ties all of the critical concepts together. Suppose we wanted to predict the capex of a large project. We say there is uncertainty in our estimate if there is a significant range of possible cost outcomes. We will describe that uncertainty using a range estimate. Standard practice is to describe a range estimate using four different numbers, the optimistic or best case, the most likely or mode, the expected or median, and the pessimistic or worst case outcomes. The oil and gas industry typically defines the optimistic case as the P10, that is a 10% chance of lower, 90% chance of higher. The median case is the P50, 50% chance of lower, 50% chance of higher, and the pessimistic case is the P90, 90% chance of lower, 10% chance of higher. 
Using this definition, there is an 80% chance that the final cost would fall between the P10 and the P90 points. Now, cost and schedule estimates are rarely symmetric, wherein the optimistic and the pessimistic outcomes are equally distant from the most likely outcome. Instead, experience shows that often the optimistic outcome is only a little better than the most likely outcome, while the pessimistic outcome is much worse. So, best practice is to allow the range estimate to have possible skew. It is then useful to ask, what causes this uncertainty, or what prevents us from providing a good point estimate? Conceptually, there are two sources of uncertainty. One is called variability, and the other, risk events. Variability is a fact that affects the estimate, but that we cannot put a precise number against. For example, in a typical offshore platform, we know there is significant steel. That is a fact. However, since we have not fully defined the platform yet, we do not know the precise amount of steel that will be needed. Furthermore, we don't know exactly what steel will cost us in the future when we're actually building the platform. Taken together, this is a type of variability in the cost of steel and a source of uncertainty in the cost estimate. There are many such items in any cost estimate and they're an important source of uncertainty. Risk events, on the other hand, are not facts, but rather possibilities. We say that a risk event may or may not occur and then it occurs with some probability. If it does occur, it has an impact on the estimate, otherwise it has no impact. An example might be a labor strike that delays construction of a critical asset. It may happen, in which case there is a significant impact on the project. It may not, and thereby have no impact. We try to quantify the significance of a risk event through its severity, which is a complex combination of probability and impact, and often using a risk assessment matrix or RAM. Ultimately, the shape of the uncertainty range estimate is a function of both variability and risk events, where variability tends to define the size of the central body and risk events determine the size of the tail. Once we think we understand the range estimate, we often need to establish a point estimate or promise for business planning purposes. The act of proposing a formal budget or schedule for a capital project is quite complex and follows well-established corporate practices. The typical outcome is to select approximately the P50 estimate, but there are many trade-offs to consider in this decision. Regardless of the precise choice, it is with respect to this promise that the ideas of opportunity and threat are created. We can think of opportunity as the possibility of doing better than the promise, while threat is the possibility of doing worse than the promise. Project managers take actions to try to enhance the opportunity and or to reduce the threat. Finally, it is important to recognize that not all people see the world in a similar manner. Some people are threat-oriented and see all of the possibilities for doing worse than their promise. Other people are opportunity-oriented and see all of the possibilities for doing better than their promise. Still others will focus on the expected or promised outcome and will tend to dismiss outliers. The takeaway is that people's perception of the riskiness of any given opportunity, that is, the relative balance between opportunity and threat, can vary widely. You can present the identical information to two equally intelligent people and can get very different perceptions of riskiness. We can discuss the uncertainty of an estimate using a range estimate. We can evaluate the sources of the uncertainty, namely variability and risk events. We can even collapse the range estimate by setting a promise that seems to properly balance the opportunity of doing better versus the threat of doing worse. However, in the end, despite the relative rigor of the process, the ultimate determination of the riskiness of an investment is both qualitative and idiosyncratic.